On Monday, the Olivier Awards announced that they will be doing their awards online this year. If you are unaware, the Olivier's are the UK equivalent to the Tony Awards. Unlike the Tonys, they are open to both West End and Off West End shows, but these are these are the most prestigious awards that you can get in UK theatre. I wanted to do a video on this as soon as I heard about it, but I wasn't sure what to do. Until I remembered a YouTuber that I used to watch called Musical Theatre Mash. He does one video a year basically, where he goes through all the Tony Award nominees and gives you like a survival guide. So I thought, I'm going to steal that. So here is the Olivier Awards Survival Guide, everything you need to know for the 25th of October. But let's take a dive into our nominees then, starting with the nominees for Best Musical. A brand new piece of original British theatre, and Juliet is a new jukebox musical made up of songs created by Max Martin. The music comes from a wide variety of pop artists, meaning you are likely to know most of the songs they include. And Juliet asks the question, what if Juliet didn't kill herself at the end of Romeo and Juliet? As William Shakespeare and his wife Anne Hathaway argue their way for a rewrite of the iconic play. While I have my gripes with Anne Juliet, I have to admit it is a strong contender this year. And the show has a lot of positives from its set to its costume to the amazing new orchestrations that they have of all these famous pop songs. And I mean, for any criticism that I have, the way that they've managed to take a conceit that's been laughed at all these years and make it actually work is pretty admirable. Will it sweep the awards though? Well, it's a strong possibility. Anne Juliet is up for nine awards this year, including Best Choreography, Best Set, Best Costume, and of course, Best Musical. Even when the dark comes crashing through, when you need a friend to carry you. The smash hit Broadway musical finally hit the London stage at a no-coward theatre this season, to critical and audience praise alike. This musical is about Evan Hansen who, after a big misunderstanding, becomes friends with the family of a boy who committed suicide in his class because the family believe he was best friends with their son. The lie grows and grows throughout the musical until Evan can't control it anymore. The musical is absolutely fantastic, but you already knew that. The music by Pasek and Paul has already become iconic. The small cast give you emotion after emotion, song after song. And overall, the show hits you so emotionally that you almost can't believe it. I've seen this show twice in London in the couple of months it was running. I was in quite a bad place when I saw Dear Evan Hansen. I was feeling so lonely, I was feeling so sad, and seeing a musical that kind of was the things that I was feeling just put on stage really spoke to me, and I was emotionally raw after this show. It just spoke to me and clearly it spoke to the Olivier nomination committee as well because it's up for seven awards, including Best Actor and Supporting Actor nominations for four out of the eight cast members, which must be some kind of like new record. And of course, Best Musical. But actually, just before we go on to the next one, can I just say, very surprising that there is no nomination for Rebecca McGuinness who plays Evan's mum in the show. That is that is a big snub, Olivier's. I, I, I don't like that. Big snub. When the booth goes bright. I have to say, I am so happy to see Amelie nominated this year. This small new version of the Broadway, I hate to use the word flop, but I mean, it kind of was. Amelie, the UK version, has breathed new life into the show and has been recognised after a small UK tour led to great reviews in an off West End run. Amelie, based on a French film, is about Amelie Poulain, a shy girl who was inspired by Princess Diana to become an anonymous do gooder Oh my god, I've wanted to talk about this show for ages and I haven't had the opportunity yet because I'm planning like all these different things and big collab. Oh, oh, I really want to talk about it, but it's so good. It was my favourite musical of last year. It's so beautiful the way they've taken this show and adapted and made it feel so whimsical and intimate. And the cast just deserves so much praise because everyone in this cast plays an instrument as well as playing all the characters and they juggle between it so seamlessly. Honestly, this production deserves so much love. I will, I will definitely promise that I will talk about the UK version of Amelie at some point, but please, I urge you 
to go and listen to the Amelie UK cast recording because it is an absolute masterpiece. I really do hope Amelie picks up some awards. I do doubt it a little bit, but I really do hope. Amelie is up for three awards, which are Best Leading Actress for Audrey Besson, Best New Orchestration slash Score, and of course, Best Musical. Waitress has had a very strange run in the West End. Starting off rough with Camp McPhee, not bringing in the audience that the producers expected, seeing as general UK audiences didn't know who she was, but finally finding its footing a little too late when Lucy Jones steps into the role. Waitress sadly closed early due to lockdown, despite rising success. The Broadway transfer is about Jenna, a small town waitress who works in a small diner and is stuck in an abusive marriage. When she finds out she's pregnant, she has an affair with a gynecologist and dreams of winning a baking contest to escape this town and build a new life with her baby. I don't need to sing Waitress's praises, I've, I've done that already. It is such a great show. Sarah Bareilles' music just shines, it's so varied and beautiful, especially songs sung by Jenna herself. Lucy Jones is amazing as Jenna, she is like made for that role and it actually pains me that she can't be nominated for Best Leading Actress. Waitress could be dubbed as the biggest snub of the season, only be nominated for two awards which are Best Orchestration slash Score and Best Musical. Now on to the Best Revival category. Trevor Nunn's production of Fiddler went from off West End to getting its limited West End run extended and extended at the Playhouse after eventually closing in November last year. This revival of the classic musical centres around the father of five daughters and his attempts to maintain his Jewish, religious and cultural traditions as outside influences encroach upon their family lives. That plot description was stolen straight from Wikipedia because I still have not seen Fiddler on the Roof. I haven't listened to it, I have not seen it, I probably should. Future episode of First Impressions? But it seems like critics seem to favour Fiddle on the Roof because it's managed to get the second most nominations of the season, coming in at eight nominations, including Best Actor, Best Supporting Actor, Best New Orchestrations, and of course, Best Revival. Also, surprisingly, this year Fiddle on the Roof is the only musical to be nominated for Best Direction makes you think that maybe they should split the Best Direction Award into plays and musicals, just like they do on Broadway, but, hmm, okay. <laughs> Winds in the east, there's a mist coming in, like something is brewing and about to begin. Mary Poppins returns to the West End stage this year, and I have to ask, is it, is it a... Is it a new revival? C can we count it as a revival? I thought it was just like the same version that was in the West End like years ago. The world was like, ha ha ha, Daniel, you can't go see Mary Poppins anymore. So I don't know, but it's been nominated. So I guess I'm wrong. Mary Poppins, if, if you don't know, I mean, how could you not? Is about the Banks family who hire a new nanny, Mary Poppins, who teaches lessons to both the children and the parents alike. I do love Mary Poppins though, I think the film is an absolute classic and I'm glad that it's back in the West End where it belongs. But the show is up for six awards, including Best Choreography, Best Leading Actress and of course Best Revival. After the success of Jesus Christ Superstar in the past few years, Regent's Park Open Air Theatre decided to revive another classic Andrew Lloyd Webber show, and probably one of the only Lloyd Webber shows that I can say that I outright love, which is Evita. This new version of Evita, the story of Ava Peron, the famous Argentine second lady, was a fresh new take. Scaled back and with Sam Pauly, who is currently playing Catherine Howard in the Broadway production of Six as Evita herself. Just like Mary Poppins, 2020 laughed in my face and snatched the tickets out of my hand when I wanted to go see Evita, so I can't say anything about this specific production, but I do really like Evita, so I do hope it picks up at least one award. It's up for two awards this year, which are Best Musical Revival and Best Choreography. Some folks dream of the wonders they'll do before their time on this planet is through. Yes, this is the second Lloyd Webber show that has been nominated for Best Revival this year, after Lloyd Webber's absolute classic Joseph and His Amazing Technicolor Dreamcoat, 
smashed its way into the Palladium this year. Joseph, of course, is based off the Old Testament Bible story of Joseph, who is favoured by his father but hated by his brothers. When he is sold into slavery, he turns his life around by interpreting people's dreams and gaining the attention of the Pharaoh. Joseph, just like Evita, is up for two awards, which are Best Leading Actor for Jack Yarrow and, of course, Best Revival. Well, that's all the musicals that have been nominated for awards this year, but there was loads of eligible shows that didn't even get nominated at all. And uh, to be fair to all the brilliant musicals that played the Western stages this year, here is a full list of all the eligible shows that were not nominated. Be More Chill, Big Curtains, Falsettos, On Your Feet, The Secret Diary of Adrian Mole, Wedding Singer and White Christmas for Best Musical, and then Fame and Sweet Charity for Revival. Now, I was originally not going to mix the plays and the musicals because I know a lot more about the musicals than I do the plays. I mean, I maybe Dan talks theatre, but I tend to talk about just musicals. But because the Olivier's mix plays and musicals into their categories so much, I feel like it's only fair that I do quick fire rounds. Let's go! Death of a Salesman, the new revival directed by Marianne Elliott, is up for five awards. So is Romashom. Sarino de Berjac, Daniel, please replace that with a better pronunciation of it. Uncle Vanya and Present Laughter up for four awards each. Amelia, the transfer from the Globe Small Playhouse, has been nominated three times in Best Comedy, Best Lighting, and Best Sound. Fleabag, come on, you know what that is, is up for three awards, including Best Actress for Phoebe Waller Bridge. The Pold Stat and the Doctor picked up two nominations, including Best New Play. Then there's a whole bunch of plays which picked up one or two nominations, which are Anna, Magic Goes Wrong, The Upstart Crow, The Ocean at the End of the Lake, The Merced Witch, Mr. Gum and the Dancing Bear, To the Moon and Back, Oi Frog and Friends, and A Very Expensive Poison. <gasps> I think... I think... I think that's everything. What about operas? So, I hope this video helped you to prepare for the Olivier Awards on the 25th of October. Taking another leaf out of a Music of It and Mash's book, I am going to link his channel in the description just because I've stolen so much from him in this video. I will be live tweeting along with this, so if you want to follow me on Twitter to catch all my thoughts on this, my link is in the description down below, or you can just search me up. I am at Dan Talks Theatre. And comment below any of your predictions. Which musicals would you like to see sweep the awards? Are you with me that you think Amelie should win everything? And if you aren't, go listen to Amelie and you'll change your mind. But if you enjoyed this video, please consider hitting like and subscribing. It really helps me out, helps out the channel. Here are some links to some of my previous videos. But that's it for me today. I'll hopefully see you next time. Bye!